Right, so I'm just going to put the old column headings in first. Right, so this is specifically about converting between binary, hexadecimal, octal, and binary quadradecimal. They're the quick ones because they're all computer formats. When we're trying to convert between decimal, we start adding up column headings. There's no real quick way of doing it. Okay, so the first thing we need to remember, let me just write up a, a value. This is a unsigned number. Okay, so I'm not saying it's got some negative or positive value, it's just a pure binary number, unsigned. When we're doing conversions between this and hexadecimal, we look at the relationship between the bits. And in the exam questions, they'll often say, what is the relationship between binary and hexadecimal? What they're talking about is, how do the groups of bits represent hexadecimal? So with hexadecimal, we've got numbers, because it's base 16, between 0 and 15. Okay? That is the digits 0 to 9, and then we go A is 10, B is 11, C, D, E, and F. In the exam, write yourself a number line because you don't want to get this wrong because you didn't read properly. Okay? I would always do that. It's too easy to make a mistake. And then all we need to do is make sure that from the right hand side we group in fours. Okay? And we just read that as a four bit number. So as a four bit number, what is that? Three. Three. So in hexadecimal, oh that's okay, it's the same. Three. Now this one, four bit number. What number would it be? Right, eleven. Put your column headings on for four bits if you're unsure. So it's 8 plus 2 which is 10 plus 1. That's 11. In hexadecimal that's B. And it's as simple as that. Okay? If we want to go the other way from hexadecimal to binary, let's say we add 7FC. Okay? Oh. I'll leave that running. Right, we're trying to work in here and recording videos. You're going to suddenly have to go away. Episode 1, Eric Roaches. Right, so if we've got eggs to death and we want to go to binary, and I'm pretending nothing happened in that interval there, so if you like me swearing on the video, I have no idea until <laughs> I upload it. Do the same thing. Each one of these represents four bits. Okay? So you can work either way. It doesn't matter which way you're doing it to write down. So I just say, right, what is seven is a four bit binary number? Zero, one, one, one. Leave a gap so we can read it. F. Right, F's 15. Yeah? 15 is one, one, one. One. Assuming there's enough ones there. We always get lost on that. C. Yeah. Eight and a four. No two or no one. As simple as that. So hexadecimal is quite trivial, which is why we use it. It's compact. Okay. I'd rather be able to write, read and write that than 12 bits. It's compact. It means when we're displaying the contents of memory, hex is a good way. You can, once you get used to it, see the patterns of bits that the C, the F, the B and the A represent. Okay. Now, while we're talking about four bits, let's talk about binary coded decimal. Binary coded decimal is a way of formatting our number systems to fit and work nicely with binary. It uses groups of four bits. Okay, and we read it exactly the same. So we're, what we're saying binary coded decimal is, each of these four bits represents a decimal digit. So when we read this, we say, okay, that's three. This one, what does these four bits represent? It doesn't, it's bigger than nine. 
So with BCD, any value bigger than that is an illegal digit. Okay, so if they give you something like that and say, what is this in binary coded decimal? Say, it isn't, it's illegal. Okay, and explain why the number is bigger than nine. But if it was that, it would be the decimal number 83. Now there's a little bit more work for the computer to do working in binary coded decimal, but what you find is quite a lot of machine code implementations will have binary coded decimal instructions. So they'll say, right, okay, interpret all your binary values as binary coded decimal and work and it'll do the hard work. But it's really easy to convert. So if I add 150 and I wanted to write that down in binary coded decimal, I do exactly what I did for hex. Okay, I say right, the first digit is one, which is no, 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 one. The second digit is five, which is no, one, no, one. Quite a nice pattern of bits, that one. And zero would be all the knots. Really trivial to read and write. Unlike converting between normal decimal and binary where you're messing about adding column headings up. Okay. So that's binary coded decimal. A nice format. It does allow us to represent, if we put binary fractions in, we can represent, let's say I wanted to do that, I can exactly represent tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, which we can't do very easily with real numbers. You can't always exactly represent things. But with binary coded decimal and a fixed point representation, you can. So it's good for currency, where actually it matters that you don't have rounding errors. Although if they're always in your favour, it wouldn't be bad. Okay. Okay, so the other representation that's another computer format is octal. Octal base 8. So in this format, I'll use this number up here, we group threes because three bits will give us the range of numbers 0 to 7, eight values, okay? And that's what octal represents. We used to use it for uh, specifying a sector on a disk because there used to be eight sectors. So you could number them 0 to 7, okay? So octal was quite compact for that. So again, I've got this. Now in the exam, let's, now let's do it a bit more evil than that. In the exam, they don't give you it nicely. They'll just go, there yeah, here you go. Uh, and they'll put a load of ones and notes together. I don't know why I keep doing sound effects, but that's just me, isn't it? Alright, so we've got an 8 bit value. We want to group in threes. You've got two choices when you do it in the exam. Write it out again, leaving a gap but always work from the right hand side. What do we give that the name? What does that stand for? LSB. Least significant bit. Least significant bit, because it's the ones column. Good, what's the one at the other side then, Joe? Most significant. Excellent, the one with the biggest column value. Okay. Right, so we want to group in three. So I'm not going to rewrite it, I'm going to show you the other technique. Make little boxes. So that's those three grouped. But then I'm going to go over the top, group those three. Now, this one, I've only got two. So what have I got implied there? A zero. Okay, always remember that, you get an implied. So I'm just going to convert. You probably don't need to do a number line for this one. What would that be? Seven. A one, a two, and a four. Yeah? What would this one be? Four. What would that one be? One. To make your answer clear, and you might see this in the exam, put a little subscript to say what base it is. So if you ever see something like that, and they say write that in binary, you'll know it's octal. Because it could be 147 in hexadecimal. Or it could be, and don't get thrown by this, well, you will if I do that, 10, base 10, decimal. 147! They got in, they don't say that, do they, Snooker? That's darts. Starts. And they go, 180! They don't go, 
147 maximum break achieved. Do they? They just clap. Okay, so that is just the quick conversions. Let's just <coughs> add on to that, doing the decimal one. So remember, there are loads of different ways of doing this, but I've taught you the dumbass way of doing it. You've got your calculators as well. So if I have my column headings, I want to convert from a binary number, uh, what number, I'll make it easy for myself. Okay, I've got this number, pure binary, it's just an unsigned number, what is it, it's a decimal number, all I do is I add up the colour reading, so I do 1 to 8 plus 16 plus 8 plus 1, which is what? 123? 153. 153. Anyone agree with it? Because I had a bit of an argument in the previous one, you'll see that on the video. When you watch it. 153 is it 153? It's definitely on because there's a 1. So 16 and 8 is 24. 128 plus 24 is 148. 100, yeah, you're right. Just double checking. If I want to go the other way, it's a little bit horrible. So let's say I want to do 57. And I want to write that as a pure unsigned binary number. Working from the biggest column first. Can't get any 128 into 57. Can't get any 64s. Ah, can get a 32. What does that leave me? So if I do minus 32. Yeah. So I move down my line. Oh, I can get 16 out of that. Gives me... 9, get an 8 out of that, which gives me 1. So, no 4s, no 2s, but a 1. That's the dumbass methods. There are complicated ways of doing it, clever ways of doing it. If you want to look them up, look them up. There's probably a YouTube video, but not from me. <laughs> Alright? That's it. Oh, finished. <laughs>